for reasons they can't even fathom. They turn up your driveway, not knowing for sure why they're doing it. They'll arrive at your door, as innocent as children, longing for the past. Of course, we won't mind if you look around, you'll say. It's only $20 per person. Well, there you have it, James Earl Jones from the Field of Dreams. And I have my hashtag Sissy of Baseball in here with me. And we are going to recap game one of the 2020 World Series. Natalie Turk, Cleveland Sports Talks on. What's going on, girl? I am hype after that game. Yeah, and uh, hype we are. And uh, I, I'm not so tired. Much. It's yeah. late, but energy, yeah. Yeah, I'm not so much. But before we go any further in this first segment, um, it is being brought to you by the Big Game Christian Sports Network. We are on YouTube at BGC Sports 1 or Network 1. We are on Twitter at BGC Sports 1 as well as Instagram, BGC Sports 1. Facebook, BGC Sports or Big Game Christian Sports Network for this show on Twitter at Bros of BB. Natalie Turk in the building with me as we just saw the Los Angeles Dodgers take game one from the Tampa Bay Rays, eight to three, powered by a dominating performance by pitcher Clayton Kershaw, exercising the demons in the World Series when six strong innings gave up only one earned run, struck out eight, and did walk one batter. Natalie, this is your time because you have. Let me say. (laughs) Sorry. You you have an affinity for Clayton Kershaw and you want him to do well in this in this particular series. So his game is done. Um, Talk about what you what you saw on uh, on his contest in game one tonight. All right. Kershaw, his slider was on point tonight. That's what I saw from him. Um. I've been calling this since we've been talking on the show. I wanted vintage Kershaw back in the postseason. Um, I'm rooting for the Rays to win. However, Kershaw, I just needed him to pull out this postseason great game because he's, you know, failed miserably in the past. So tonight his slider was on point. Um, He passed John Smoltz as the second pitcher ever to record 200 postseason strikeouts. Um, If I were Dave Roberts, I would have left him in personally. I was, I was a little surprised when he pulled him out, but luckily it worked out in the end and I'm going to chant still Kershaw MVP, even though I think Mookie may give him a run for his money on that, but I'm sure we can talk about that. Yeah, we'll get to that later on as the season unfolds, or the series unfolds, rather. And uh, speaking of Mookie Betts, I tweeted, and we were, we've were we been tweeting at each other all night long during the game, and it was some fun bantering going back and forth, but I actually tweeted um, from at Bros of BB that Mookie Betts is the first player in MLB history to earn America a free taco from both the American League and the National League. So, Go get your tacos, everybody, on October 28th. He was two for four. Two runs scored, did drive in one, had a walk as well. Stole two bases. Easily, easily, uh, other than Clayton Kershaw, was the player of the game. And Cody Bellinger, um, he did it again. (laughs) Went deep, two-run home run, although he was only one for four. And did you see the the defensive play that he made there in the top of the ninth inning? when he robbed yet another person of a home run. Did you see that, Nat? Oh, I absolutely did. He he robbed Meadows of the home run. He made that great catch. That would have been a home run. Um, he did not make a catch. I think it was in the seventh inning, Bellinger, didn't it? look like he was favoring his shoulder. He didn't make the catch. And then he redeemed himself in that ninth inning. And he robbed Meadows of the home run. And I think Joe Kelly looked at him like, thank you, because that was about to be a homer. Yeah, he and, and Joe Kelly actually tapped his right shoulder. <laughs> in, um, oh, I missed that. Yeah, in, in celebration, of course, we saw what happened when Bellinger hit the go-ahead home run in game seven against the Braves in the, LS, in the LCS. 
and knocked his shoulder out of joint, but then knocked it, it had to put it back into place. So that, I thought that was pretty cool. And even after the home run, that did you see where they did the toe tap celebration as opposed to the arm bump? <laughs> yeah, so they're doing that now, you know, in favoring of his shoulder. So I've enjoyed that. All right, so once again, the uh, the Dodgers are now three games away from winning their first World Series since 1988. That was when, of course, they beat the Oakland A's in four games to one. Um, but let's just let's talk about the uh, the Rays for a second because I had tweeted this as well because in that first inning, Clayton Kershaw and Tyler Glasnow both kind of had a little bit of trouble, and I remember saying, I said, whoever gets to uh, whoever gets to the other opposing pitcher first, or if they can get to the opposing pitcher first in this uh, in this first inning, then they will have an opportunity. Uh, they will have an opportunity to to maybe make a dent in the scoreboard early. But neither one of them got dented. Neither uh, both of them were able to escape pretty much unscathed. And from there, Clayton Kershaw just went to work. But Tyler Glass now, he wasn't bad at all. I mean, he only went four and a third innings. He gave up six earned runs, but of course he left the game with I think it was three players or three three uh, three players on base for the Dodgers. Actually, ended up having eight strikeouts as well. Um, here's the thing, and we talked about this a little earlier. This was a career high 112 pitches for Glass now in only four and a third innings. Anything that you think or that you saw could have made a difference for him, possibly even. Uh, keeping those guys off the base pa base pass and even going a little bit further than he did in this game. Um, not really, but what I did notice and what you were saying is, as the game was starting, um, both pitchers seemed to struggle a bit in the first, but they got out of it quickly, um, and it looked to be what was going to be a pitcher's duel until. So. I just think that Glass now, you know, there was a couple of walks, I believe, that he had. And then just that high pitch count. Um, he seemed to be a little off, um, I think, with his breaking ball they were stating. So I'm not sure if – here's the thing, too. Um, these pitchers haven't seen the lineups because they haven't faced each other. Mm -hmm. So you can – you know, argue either side, either, you know, is that a pitcher advantage or is that a player advantage? So I'm wondering if in this case, it just was a disadvantage to glass now. And, you know, he, he ended up on the wrong side of this one tonight. Um, despite going strong in the first three innings or so, I would say. Yeah. And, and for glass now, I, I believe that he's actually going to have to learn how to pitch because, um, he really only has two pitches. One is the fastball, of course, that touched 100, I think, 14 different times uh, in last night's game. And I'm going to say last night because it was last night. So, yeah, he he touched the gun about 14 times over 100. And, um, you know, and his only other pitch is the curveball. And the curveball, he was actually in command of it, you know, pretty well for the most part of the game, in my opinion. Um, it was just those couple of mistakes, that one big mistake, of course, that he made to Bellinger. I called it a Bellinger bomb. And then when he left all those other uh, all those other guys on base, his um, his dugout, or not his dugout mates, his bullpen mates couldn't close the deal and get those guys off or get those guys out. So, um, so here we are. I mean, the Dodgers are now up one zip. And uh, as we said in the preview show that has aired, um, the games will be back-to-back with the exception of, I think they're going to have maybe a day off on on maybe Thursday, separating game two and game three. So, yeah, that would actually be – yeah, that would be Thursday. Um, how do we feel about the – or you know what, let me get to this because we talked about this at length in the preview show it was, as we have about five minutes left to go in the segment. Um, the managerial advantage slash disadvantage, and we kind of disagreed on it. I said that – Dave Roberts is going to have to show me something. Uh, I gave the slight edge to Kevin Cash, and you did go with Dave Roberts. Talk about what he did in this game as far as managing and, and making sure that he was doing the quote-unquote X and O's to the advantage of his team. Yes, and I will continue with what I've said of Dave Roberts. Um, I do believe, and I tweeted a joke about it, that his job's on the line, and 
I believe that he has learned from his mistakes and that's what I continue to say. Um, so he's been in this situation before. So he knows what he's done wrong and what he hasn't. So I think he, you know, really took those mistakes from the past and went ahead and, you know, applied them for tonight. I did question him taking Kershaw out, but there was a rally that Kermara started. Um, I think it was in the seventh inning. And then Gonzalez, you know, that double play on the mound, that that was unbelievable. But back to Dave Roberts, I just think that he's learned from his mistakes in the past. And he's really going to work hard to make sure that his team can go all the way and win this title. And I saw that in many of the decisions that he made tonight. Yeah, it it definitely feels like that that this is um this is a championship or bust for the for the Dodgers. And I agree with you. I do believe that he may be managing for his job. Um, but the good thing about this is that they're off to a good start. They got the first game, so they only have three left. Um, and we're going to see what kind of manager Kevin Cash is from the Tampa Bay Rays. Natalie, did you know that, um, that, 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 that manager or Kevin Cash is the only, he's the only person to have played in the little leagues and then managed in the big leagues. Little league world. No, I, little wow. League I didn't, did not know that. That is a really interesting fact. So he played managed in the little leagues no he pl he played in the little league world series and now he's managing in wow. the big league world series so that's really cool i thought that was pretty interesting as well um but yeah that team they have some work to do and uh randy a rosarena uh he did not have a good game at all uh, i thought it was going to be a little bit closer than what it was especially with uh, Yanni Diaz leading off the game with the single. I was thinking to myself, I wonder what Natalie's saying now. But you know, <laughs> it ended up going. It ended up going the way that uh that most people wanted to go for uh for hashtag Dodgerland, I guess. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and look at game two or look ahead to game two that will be taking place, uh, of course on Wednesday. And Blake Snell, if I'm not mistaken, is going in game two. Uh, Dave Roberts has not announced who will be who's going to be the pitcher taking the bump for the Dodgers. Um, I have a feeling that it's going to be Walker Bueller, um, but who we won't know until until game day. So uh, the 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 adjustments that I feel like the uh, the Rays are going to have to make, I think they're going to need to be a little bit more patient than they were, and not. Uh, yeah, they, 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 as a matter of fact, they may, they may need to be a little bit more aggressive. Um, and that's kind of what I saw, what they did to Kershaw in the first inning. It just didn't kind of pan out. They didn't get the quality hit or they get, didn't get the key hit at the right time. So um, any thoughts on game two as we're coming down on about a minute and a half left to go in this first segment? Right. I'm going to say this. I don't count the Rays out at all. I actually said the Dodgers are better on paper, but my heart strings want the Rays to win. So the series. So what I feel is if they just need to play, um, the Dodgers played small ball tonight as well. So maybe you know, they need to incorporate that. Um, like you said, being more patient at the plate, drawing walks, getting on base, you know, getting that pitcher count up um, and getting to the starting pitcher early is important. Um, base stealing things like that so i don't count the raise out at all yeah and, and speaking of just that the uh base on balls do you know how many walks the Tampa bay rays drew in game one one no one walk is wow what they so they do definitely need that's to the key willie yeah and when you yeah. because i tweeted i mean like walks are just terrible their, their leadoff walks in particular and we saw a lot of that from the Rays pitchers uh in game one all right so it's gonna wind it down for segment number one as we have recapped game number one uh for the world series the dodgers are now up one zip looking forward to game two come on back on the other side of the break we got much more baseball talk natalie turk to the dopest engineer in the in the game big day 
baseball fans all over the planet, our time, we're here. Willie Epstein Jr., y'all come on back and holler at us.